This is a little bit of a different look for you guys, isn't it? For an episode, or rather a post-game show, for the Mavericks being delivered in this way, it's a little bit different. I understand that. I understand. But all the same, because it's in an episode and it's a day for feeling dangerous, it's just going to have to get condensed like this. The layout's slightly different, but you know what? I think we'll be all right. The Dallas Mavericks kept the the train chugging along getting their third straight win hey by the way in case you haven't noticed the minute i got back from vacation they went from a two game skid to a three game streak hell yeah man i'm the lucky charm apparently because dallas picks up a 127 123 victory in sacramento and in this game you have go figure more history made by Luka Doncic as he becomes the youngest player in NBA history to post a stat line of 20, 15, and 15. He picked up 25 points, 17 assists, 15 rebounds, and he did it on 8 of 18 shooting. His three ball is still not there. 0 of 5 from 3. However, 9 of 10 at the line, considering he was 2 of 8 at the line just the night before, I'm much more so pleased with that. Now, he did have six turnovers, but when you're picking up 17 assists, I'm going to say you still won out. You still put, posted a positive double-digit uh, assist difference there. So I'm going to go ahead and let that one fly. The Mavericks in this game, their defense wasn't great. Honestly, I'm being totally honest when I say that because they gave up 52% shooting compared to just 51% for them. They were outshot from three, 36% to 33%. Uh, they turned it over more, although they still had a solid number at 11. They only forced eight turnovers by the Kings. Darren Fox was a problem for them for sure. Uh, they were out-assisted. They won the rebounding battle by a fairly narrow margin by five boards, 47 to 42, including 13 offensive boards compared to 11. They got a couple blocks. That's nice. Sacramento got more steals. And uh, yeah, this game to me felt like the difference was... The free throw line, Sacramento, 11 of 20 at the line. That is trash. And that was a big impact for them. Meanwhile, you got Dwight Powell, another 8 of 10 from the field for 17 points, 9 boards. He's playing right now really well the last three games. On this streak that they're on, Dwight Powell has been playing great. And as, uh, as Chuck Cooperstein, I believe, pointed out on Twitter as well, Dwight Powell's been, uh, excuse me, excuse me, it was Brad Townsend on Twitter. Uh, the last six and a half games, Dwight Powell, by the way, six and a half games, that's a weird little distinction to make. But Dwight Powell in the last six and a half games is 42 of 51 from the field, which is outrageously good. Like, he's been cooking. So even with us getting frustrated by his performance, even during those two losses that the Mavericks had, uh, he's still cooking a little bit. And he's rebounding better as well, I think. So it is something to keep an eye on in that regard. But uh, other standouts for the Mavericks beyond just Luka and Powell, who I've already been talking about the past couple games, you got a solid contribution from pretty much everybody in the game for the Mavericks. Dorian Finney-Smith, 39 minutes. He is the high-minute man for the game, and he puts up 15 points, 8 boards. When you get that kind of production out of Dorian Finney-Smith, you're generally in good territory. He's shooting 38% on three-pointers this year, which is crazy good. And as I believe it was Dalton Trigg pointed out on, uh, yes, as he pointed out on Twitter, 38% from three for Dorian Finney-Smith this year, but 44% from the left corner. That is ridiculous. That is something I never thought Dorian Finney-Smith would be able to add to his game. So the fact that he has, mwah, kudos to Dodo for adding that to his game because that makes you a complete 3 and D player and we know about his vicious putback dunks and athleticism, his long rangey defense, 6'9 with a 6'11 uh, wingspan, very nice in that regard. That, admit, that makes him the clear winner over my initial dude, Justin Jackson, who, hey, had himself a little bit of a, a moment as well with a, a deep three to beat the buzzer. But uh, also in this game, you get... 18 points out of Tim Hardaway Jr. on 7 of 15 shooting, only 3 of 9 on 3, but still more than or just under 50% shooting for Hardaway, 18 and 6. He's rebounding pretty well lately and uh two assists as well. Maxi gives you 14 and 4 in 30 minutes. 
Seth Curry had himself a great first half with 16 points. He ends up with 21 for the game on 7 of 11 shooting, 5 of 8 from 3. Surprisingly, only 2 of 4 at the line. That's a 90% free throw shooter, so that's a little out of character. Uh, DeLon Wright, only 14 minutes, but he gave you 8, 3, and 4 on 4 of 7 shooting, and he gave you another block. Like, I, I ser- seriously think we need to find more minutes for DeLon Wright, but I don't know. A guy I think is in trouble with Dallas is Jalen Brunson. He plays 10 minutes, 2 points on 1 of 5 shooting, 0 of 1 from 3. I think Jalen Brunson is going to be dealt at the deadline, and I think he has had a very up and down year this year with the Mavericks. I I like him. I'm hoping it's just a little bit of a rut that he's been in this year, but you know what? For the large part of this season, he's fallen off. We've got so many backcourt guys at this point that it's just not a very viable option to get him the minutes and to expect the same kind of production we got out of him last year. So I would say if there is a deal brewing in Dallas, whether it's a Covington deal or something like that, I know they just dealt in uh, they just dealt Teague, Minnesota did, back to Atlanta, and where it is they're looking for more deals and they want a ball handler. Well, we've got a lot of those to offer, so... Maybe there is a Covington deal there potentially on the on on the plate for Dallas. I would very much believe Brunson would be part of that deal if that comes to be, but we shall see. Uh, for the Kings, you had Harrison Barnes and De'Aaron Fox doing the most damage. Actually, Buddy Heald. Yeah, three guys basically carry the load for them in that game. Not much production from the bench uh, for them. Looks like they had about 20-something, about 22, 23 points off the bench did the Kings. Harrison Barnes in 39 minutes gave them 25 and 8 on 10 of 18 shooting. That's a pretty solid game from Harrison Barnes. That's better than what we were getting out of him towards the end of his run in Dallas. De'Aaron Fox, meanwhile, is a problem for the league. He posts a near triple-double, 27 points, 12 assists, and 7 rebounds on 11 of 17 shooting. Only 3 of 9 at the line, though. So he kind of like Luka has something going on there, it looks like. But De'Aaron Fox is a problem. I will say this, although I'm not upset because obviously we flipped Dennis Smith Jr. for uh, KP, and I think KP is the best partner next to Luka, if healthy, long term. And you can't even have a production with both guys having to have the ball that like, you would have if you had a De'Aaron Fox and a Luka together. But the fact remains the same. We chose Dennis Smith Jr., who had a quality rookie year, over De'Aaron Fox. And uh, De'Aaron Fox is clearly the better of those two players, so... Hey, it worked out for us. We got a mulligan, apparently, and it was not only was it a mulligan, we did better on the second go around, I think. But uh, De'Aaron Fox is a player and he's a beast. Buddy healed, meanwhile, my dude from OU, 37 minutes, 25 points, three boards, two assists, 10 of 23 shooting. So 25 points on 23 shots, oof, not good, not good. Uh, at least not productive. Under 50% shooting, only three of 11 on threes. Not a great game from him. Uh, Bilicia also gave them 11 points, 12 boards, 5 assists. That's pretty damn quality there. Marvin Bagley, the guy taken right before Luka in the draft. 30 minutes, 12.7 rebounds. I almost said assists. That would be incorrect. Luka had more assists, I believe, last night with 17 than Bagley has on the season was a stat I saw earlier. Now, again, they don't have the same role and they don't do the same things, but that is technically true and something that's technically true is the best kind of true depending on your perspective in this case marvin bagley though uh his 12 and 7 was very quiet like luca his fingerprints are all over the game i mentioned earlier he became the youngest player to post the 2015 15 stat line he also did it and he tied the record as well for fastest to do it that being jokic so damn Luca with two, I know there's a stat for everything, and Luca doesn't care about him either, but it does give some context and perspective to how special what we're witnessing is. Luca balled out, had himself a nice game, and uh, while his fingerprints were everywhere and very noticeable, Marvin Bagley, yeah, he, was, he was kind of there. He, he was a quiet 12-7, and seven, and I think while he's a nice player, he'll probably have a decade-plus long career. You know, they had De'Aaron Fox, and they hit on Fox. Luka, Fox together maybe doesn't make sense, obviously, because of the ball handling thing. So maybe you could argue by that logic they made 
what was a decent choice for them. But if you want to put it just one-on-one head-to-head and just look at it on the basis of just Luca versus Bagley, yeah, they missed. Elsewhere, uh, Riza, very quiet game out of him in 19 minutes, only three points, only three shot attempts, all three from three, one and two there. Uh, Corey Joseph, Yogi Ferrell, hey, our old Maverick buddy there, 15 minutes, nine points. Yeah, not uh, not a huge game. I still have interest in Dwayne Deadman. I did not play in the game. DNP, coach's decision. I am interested in that possibility of Dwayne Deadman. I think he gives you some front court help. Uh, nice defender, and as he showed with Atlanta last year, he can help you stretch the floor a little bit as well. So if you really are concerned about KP a little bit, there you go. Another guy that to a lesser degree can perform uh, somewhat similarly in that regard and still give you a little bit of help in some other areas you need. So just something to consider. But this is a good win for the Mavericks. I know it's a close win, only a four-point win, but it moves them to 11 games over 500. It builds them now with a little bit of momentum after having been on a skid there. And now they come back to the AAC. Oof! Because the AAC has not been super kind to us. We come back to the AAC now Friday to face the Portland Trailblazers with Dame Lillard and a somewhat seemingly rejuvenated Carmelo Anthony. Something to consider there. But uh, that's going to do it for this. Again, sorry for the delay on the Mavericks talk for the postgame show. Don't worry about it. We still got more Feeling Dangerous coming.